Good morning and welcome to our God's Word for Today devotional. Our chapter for today in our God's Word for Today devotional is Psalm 30, verses 1 to 12. And let me read to us this whole chapter, Psalm 30, verses 1 to 12. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have grown me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from show. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. But your favor, O Lord, you made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell you your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth. And cloth me with gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. One of the glorious truths about this psalm is the truth that God's favor is for a lifetime. That's why David says here, weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. David vows to praise God. Because it was God who drew him up. God lifted him up. This is a picture of a pulling up from danger and away from death. So think of this and imagine this, that David was somehow in a pit and God has to pull him up away from danger. Psalm 71 verse 20 echoes the same experience which says, You who have made me see many troubles and calamities, will revive me again from the depths of the earth. You will bring me up again. This experience referred to David's brush with God's wrath. Why? Because he was proud that he conducted a census. And we can see this account in First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 7 to 13. And God's judgment came in the form of pestilence or plague for three days. Undoubtedly, this plague was terrible. David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. This is in 1 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 14, or 21, verse 14. David said to God, God was the prophet, I am in great distress. Let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercy is great. Indeed, in that three days, David saw the consequence of his sins. And sin was really hard or was a hard task master. And he paid the misery as a consequence of it. But this consequence or this plague from God was better, was a better alternative to something worse. And that is to be conquered by his enemies and that he would rejoice or gloat over his defeat. That's something worse that David can take in. It's better to fall into the hands of God than to fall into the hands of the enemies where they will gloat over and rejoice over his defeat and shame the name of God. In this psalm, he described himself that he was spiraling down into an hopeless pit, but God lifted him up. He was broken and that's why he begged for mercy unto God who healed him. And he confessed this. And the thing that we can learn about confession is that confession is the key of healing. And the other parts of scripture, we can read that confession really is needed for healing. In First John 1 verse 9, for us Christians, we are enjoined by John to confess our sins because he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. And even... In Psalm 32, verse 1 to 2, the blessed man, according to David, is the one whose sins are forgiven, whose transgressions are covered, that there is no 
guilt in him because it's covered and forgiven by God. So God's anger is just for a moment and David extolled and praised God for that so that he concluded that God's favor really is for a lifetime. God's grace will never wane. It will never be depleted. It's always there, available for us. God's grace is always available for us. So wherever we sin, wherever we transgress the Lord, sin abounds more. But that should not be a reason that we should continue sinning. As David said in Romans, shall we continue in sin so that grace will abound? Of course not. God forbid. So, despite of the pain and the anguish, the consequences of his sin, he was weeping the whole night, was weeping really because of the pain and anguish of his sin. But there was a hope and he said, joy comes in the morning. A cause for him to rally God's people to rally God's saints to celebrate and sing praises unto the Lord. We should celebrate the Lord, the, the goodness of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, because despite of our failings and sins, His favor of forgiveness and granting us a new start, that should be the reason why we should rejoice in the Lord and we should worship the Lord. In verse 6 and 7, he recounted his pride here. He became proud in times of prosperity. And that's always the case. In times of prosperity, we tend to feel that we are self-sufficient. We don't need God. David became too self-confident. He felt secure in, in the times of prosperity. And that's why he was so complacent. He told Joab to number the, the people. And that displeased the Lord. And this... Prosperity that he mentioned here is, is the same to the word complacency that we can read in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 32. It's a um, state where one becomes so proud that he's, he lost his guard and he's so self-confident that as if he does not need God. That's why he said in verse 6 and 7, As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. But by your favor, O Lord, you made my mountain stand strong. He was so proud to look unto the power that he has through the armies that he had. And that displeased the Lord. And because of his pride, God showed his disfavor upon him. And that's why in verse 7, a little portion, God hid his face from David. And David felt dismayed. David should his great distress here because he found out that the Lord showed his disfavor and that distressed him. And thank God that in times that we sin and God will make it out, make us conscious about our sin, thank God that we feel the pain and embarrassment and we feel dismayed like David. It would, be, it would be terrible if we sin and we don't feel guilty. We don't feel embarrassment before the Lord. So David expresses distress here by praying from verse 8 to 10. To you, O Lord, I cry. And to the Lord, I plead for mercy. He can plead for justice, but he could plead for mercy. Verse 9. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell you of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. He realized that it was really a, a great privilege for him to serve the Lord while he is alive. What profit is there if he will go down into the place of death called Sheol? Now, he was, he was so hopeful. He was so expectant of God's second chance that God could forgive him and give him a new start so that he'll be able to praise and worship God in a new way. His resolve was to worship the Lord forever. This thing could not be done in the grave. You cannot worship God in the grave. We should worship God while we're still alive. He said in verse 
11 to 12, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. Let my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. That was his resolve, to give thanks and to worship the Lord forever. Because God has turned his sackcloth into dancing, or his mourning into dancing. He's turned his grief into gladness. He turned ev everything because God is gracious. This favor from God must be the reason why this psalm was written by David for the dedication of the temple. As you found it in your Bible, this was written to be sung at the dedication of the temple. And we know that David was not able to build a temple. It was his son, Solomon. So David may have written this prophetically in anticipation of the future dedication of the temple, which Solomon has to build later. And even when we look at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who will be sitting at the temple of David, he will sit on the throne of David. We always go we go back to what God know and Christ has done, the favor that he did at Calvary. The reason why we should not cease in praising and thanking God because of what he did at the cross. He conquered sin, death, and hell. We, we should not forget the gospel. Let's always remember it. Drink in the gospel, live in the gospel, and give away the gospel. Jesus is always the reason why we should worship God. We should be a people who will be always hopeful, weeping with tired for the night. Yes, we suffer consequences for our sins, yet God can forgive and God can give us a new start. Joy always comes in the morning. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your word today. Bless this our heart. Help us, Lord, that we will be like David that we will not wallow in despair and distress, but have the hope. For we know that there's no such thing as sin so great that you cannot forgive. And you cannot give us a new beginning. You can forgive of us and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness as far as the east is from the west. Lord, you will remove our sins away from us and that we can have a new start. And maybe that it, this will be our resolve that since you change our mourning into dancing, our grief into gladness, Lord, help us to thank you, Lord, and worship you, not only for today, but every day and even forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.